Hello, Hateless Gaming here, bringing you a torpedo update video because the torpedo update just came out. I will be providing a link to the update blog below. Um, but the update is that they buffed torpedoes truly pretty significantly. And normally I don't do patch reviews or whatnot, but we'll give this a shot. Uh, I just want to talk about the torpedoes and how good they have gotten because of the buff. Um, and we're going to use a level 4 mission to demonstrate the power of them in a Barkest. Uh, so I'm just going to say that there is a serious downside to torpedoes, or has been a serious downside to torpedoes over the past XY time. Uh, they did get a buff uh, a few months ago in the, uh, in the close range uh, DPS update where they got just a flat 20% DPS buff to Rage Ammo, which is the close range variance of Torpedoes. And um, they really have always lacked application and range are the two statistics that they have seriously lacked. So in this patch, all Torpedoes got an explosion radius reduction of 10%. So if the explosion radius before was 600, it is now 540. Uh, and an explosion velocity increase of 10% as well. So it had an explosion radius of 100, or uh, an explosion velocity of 100 meters a second. It has 110 meters a second base. So they've, they've gotten significantly better. This means that we can actually apply to a battleship with a battleship sized weapon. And torpedoes are freaking awesome in DPS. They've always been known for their insane DPS and now they can actually throw it down on top of that the missile velocity on the base stat has been increased by 20 percent which means that they have 20 percent more range and then the flight time has also been increased by 20 percent so we end up with roughly a, a 30 to 40 percent i'm like 35 ish percent range bonus to torpedoes and we figured out a way uh, i was testing them all day today and they were quite fun on stream uh, we flew a typhoon a raven navy a barkest and a uh golem to kind of test them emissions and i found my very favorite thing with missiles after this patch was to build a kitey barkest torpedo ship this is the most absurd thing. I know this is just a simple, like, run it together fit. We have a booster, a boost amplifier. We have three guidance computers and a micro warp drive. And then we have six torpedo launchers across the highs. Then we have two torpedo or missile guidance enhancers. And then we have three, or sorry, four ballistics controls. This is a super silly fit and it's kind of absurd. But if you just bear with me, this is really hilarious. We love uh, load up the no eh. If we load up, load up the javelin rockets and load up missile range scripts, this ends up without implants or rigs with a range of 115. That matches our locking range of 114. In reality, uh, the way the math works, uh, you would take the seven times 16, and I believe that uh, equals out to about 106, 107. It's just shy of the actual 115 that it displays, but it, it it fires out really far, and it's surprisingly good in the Barkest because of the way the velocity bonus works. So we have super fast missiles, or super fast torpedoes, with the Barkest, making it an insanely fun ship to fly. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and demonstrate in a very large mission how well this thing does and we'll talk a little bit more about how big of a deal this application changes as we start nuking things uh, but i do want to get us into motion while i talk about this uh the golem does exceptionally well too with all of its application bonuses and stuff it, it, it does really well uh, and it can actually reach out further with javelin missiles but the barquest is a little bit better with the closer range missiles um and then the the golem also has the torpedo bonuses uh which make the raven an exceptionally good uh chip so we're just going to kind of start flying away here. Uh, remember I said it's a KD torpedo fit. So we're going to go ahead and run away. Notice we don't have any drones fit to this or anything. Uh, so we're just going to kind of go start running away. I believe this group's the one that engages us first. 
we can go ahead and load up the Nova Rage. And then we're gonna change two of these to precision. Even with Nova Rage, we're, we're reaching out 64 kilometers. But I'm gonna switch a couple of these to precision. I haven't really figured out exactly how much precision you actually need, but we're just gonna laugh at these guys as they uh, take a few shots from our torpedoes and actually get applied, uh, which is something that the torpedoes in general have been missing. We have a 54 kilometer flight range. Just, just to, to, to stress out and saying this is a 54 kilometer fi flight range with our close range ammo. This is obscene. Sorry, 53 kilometer. And we're still, we're using two guys uh, scripts. We're literally two shotting these things from pretty much whatever range we want. And we can just kind of pull range and not worry about tank, like at all. There's no reason that this needs to be shiny. It can do it cheap because, well, all the application modules are cheap. And uh, we're only getting a little bit of extra DPS from the factor mods. I believe this room is left to right. So we go from this way to this way. Uh, I don't remember. So I'm just going to lock up this group and hope for the best. Worst case, we're flying away from them because, well, we can. We got a couple of battleships. You saw that we did those in a uh, couple shots each. I'm going to go ahead and go for a cruiser next. As we engage this group, I hope I didn't do it backwards. Even if we did, we'll be okay. So we didn't quite get one shot. Looks like we'll be two shotting this. This is not an elite cruiser. Uh, we were uh, one shotting cruisers earlier today with the golem and target painters and rage and three application scripts. It was able to one shot most everything it came across, which was absolutely silly. But the torpedo bonus or the torpedo buff uh, made these ships, uh, made missile ships with torpedoes uh, surprisingly powerful and we can actually apply to most everything even with rage torpedoes which are notorious for uh, having poor application given this viper probably is not going to be easy to hit as it's an elite frigate uh, but what we can do is we can show off some uh, Kaldari Navy Nova ammo which I appear to have not brought no, I only brought Javelin. Javelin does apply a little bit better. But it's still not great because it's tier 2 ammo. We're still killing this guy. I thought I brought all three types of ammo. I must have forgot the third. Uh, but if, if you also bring Nova ammo, uh, you can easily deal with this. As you can see, we are just destroying these frigates. Uh, even though our application is not the greatest, uh, we can still get really good application on them. We're going to switch this third one to Precision just to kind of help out a little bit. And uh, I know this isn't effective and we should bring drones for this, but it just show, showing the effectiveness of this uh, it is absolutely surprising. I say that as it's getting reps and we're not in armor yet and we're not applying very well. But this is so much better than Torch Pro before. Back in before time, uh, this thing would probably be taking about 100, maybe, or maybe 100 damage per shot. There's no way that we would be doing 300 plus damage a shot, which is just absolutely silly once we get through that shield. And it should finish off here in just a couple of shots. Uh, this is a really bad example of it, but I don't have Nova ammo or uh, Kaldari ammo on me, which has the best application of them. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to show this off and uh, show you guys how effective this can actually be. Again, we're shooting rage rockets at a frigate, just for for reference. And this is also an elite frigate. These are the the really difficult ones to kill. We're gonna go ahead and fly up a little bit more. We still have 45 kilometer flight range with rage rockets, which is absolutely insane. Uh, we can continue to kite and pull range if we want to. I uh, will go ahead and lock up all the things that yellow box me. And we'll continue chewing on these guys. Uh, this is almost as effective as a uh, Macarial, which is super insane when you think about it, that we have a missile ship competing with uh, one of the best mission ships in the game. And I'm really debating whether to switch my mission blitzer to this ship. The only downside to the Barcast over the Macarial is the warp speed. And with this torpedo buff, it's just, it's obscene how fast this thing is. And also, its its ammo consumption is really low because it's torpedoes. That's 
actually kind of nice. But we do one shot a lot of things and we uh, two or three shot most other things, which is kind of silly when you think about it. But with the rage ammo, we are making uh, 1600 DPS and we're two shotting most cruisers. And we're even two shotting the battle tips because we can actually apply to them. We're getting a little far from these guys. That's okay. We can turn around at any time. But the 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 ranges are just absolutely silly. Like it it, it blew my mind uh, when I saw these ranges this morning. I just thought I'd demonstrate how solid torpedoes are now. Uh, with these changes. Uh, we'll go ahead and start flying back down. We'll shut that off and turn this on. Again, you saw the fitting. It was very slim on tank. We have very little of it. And we, we don't even need it. Because we're doing so much damage. I still haven't quite dialed these in or, or, or figured this quite out. Like what exactly I can and can't get away with. But it is surprisingly effective. And um, the cool part is we can switch to javelin and get out to 100 kilometers. Uh, or use the closer range ammo to uh, obliterate things at a closer range, which appears to be the way to do it. But anyways, if, if you guys are unfamiliar with this mission, uh, there is no real blitz for it. You, you can't skip the rooms. You have to full clear them. And it's a really big mission that takes a lot of time to do. Uh, and we are literally laughing our way through this in an astounding rate with a relatively decent Barkas setup. I mean, I know that this is an expensive setup, but I mean, seriously, torpedoes are insane now. I just, just want to demonstrate how good these are after this uh, patch. We just one shot that, that cruiser. Uh, and then we also don't really have to worry about missile flight time because the Rekas has the the range or the, the speed bonus to the torpedoes, so we're not wasting shots. And then the cool part about this fit is it does not utilize a target painter, which means I don't have to also target paint every single target. Uh, and then the reason that we get away with that is we have so much precision going for us. I know there's a lot of stacking penalty on this ship, but there's not really anything else uh, that makes it more effective or anything else more effective in different slots. Uh, so just kind of eating everything. And it's surprisingly simple. But yeah. Um, yeah with, with Javelin rockets, you can reach out surprisingly far. And it does really well. Like I'll, I'll show you guys the simulations here. So if if we look at at the range uh, with the Nova Rage torpedoes and the um, and the precision scripts, we get out to 8:45. And we look at charges uh, for the for these, and we look at uh, our uh, Kaldari Navy Nova ammo, which would be uh, the middle variant. It's up to 54, and then with uh, Javelin, which I showed you guys originally with range scripts, we show you guys Javelin, Javelin reaches out to 82, and then if we switch that to range scripts instead of precision scripts, which is a common thing to do, is to switch out to, to range scripts uh, or missiles, and it does make the ranges really silly. We get 115 with the um, with the Javelin, and then the Nova is kind of in the middle, or the Kaldari is kind of in the middle, and Kaldari reaches out to 77, and then Rage, surprisingly, actually ends up with an, a 64 kilometer range, which means that in missions, you can just sit here and use Rage all day, uh, and not care, because most NPCs in missions like to hang out within 60 kilometers. And then if we do incur too much DPS or have a hard time tanking, we can always just use the micro warp drive to fly away. And we don't have to worry about transversal or anything like that, like we do with the Macario. Uh, so it just ends up cleaning house uh, and being really easy to fly. Uh, however, this is with max skills, so I don't know how much 
worse it's going to be using submax skills and i do have to do some testing but the as you guys can see the damage application is nuts we're actually applying a healthy percentage of our damage uh the, the scrap is uh after resists uh which the resists are actually reasonable they have 27 percent so uh we are applying somewhere in the ballpark of a thousand dps at peak which is way more than we need to uh, we'll go ahead and get our shield dropped up in the next area and uh, we're at a zero on the acceleration gate we're not stressed at faster at all because we've cleared this room so fast I don't know if you guys noticed how many NPCs there were. There were a lot of NPCs here. And we've just been chewing on them. Like it was nothing. We're going to go ahead and start heading into the next room. Uh, this is a three room mission. Uh, the first room was this one. The second one is just a bunch of random stuff. I remember it being fairly easy. And then the third room, we have to kill Hubrak Moon and his friends, which I remember being a fairly difficult mission when I was learning the game. Uh, but this is actually the very first mission that I have ever flown in. Uh, a buddy of mine uh, that taught me how to play the game actually took me into this mission, uh, possibly and be in the same system. Uh, I don't remember what system we actually did the mission in, but it was out of Nakagard, uh, which is like one jump over. Uh, so it is very possible I did my very first mission in this system in a very similar location. Um, but he took it, it he, he had a uh, Tempest fleet issue uh, that was a passive fit, and we spent about an hour doing this mission. Uh, and I, uh, he, he told me to sit still and fly a catalyst and wait until he drew, drew the whole room. And, uh, well, my catalyst died. Good old early days of EVE Online, I, I suppose. But there's there's a whole lot of NPCs here. Uh, and like I've said, this thing just eats them up. Uh, we're just going to aggro one group at a time. We're trying not to pull the whole room. And I, I hon honestly, I didn't bring up EVE Survival. Uh, you really should bring up EVE Survival if you're inexperienced in missions. It will teach you a lot about what's going on in the missions and how EVE Survival uh, kind of spells it out for you is it'll give you a screenshot of a room or it'll tell you what groups there are and you really only want to engage one group at a time and sometimes what happens is groups are linked with each other so there might be a situation where if i engage this group i would get the entire room uh would start aggroing me where as if i engage this group and then this group and then this group the whole room won't go for me and this is really important to understand so that you don't stress your tank too much because if you overstress your tank you're gonna have a bad time uh, and this is kind of this will kind of go into mission running as well um but in mission running in general and you do want to understand the mission that you're going into and really don't over pull the aggro because if you do that your tank will break you'll not have fun and uh it it, it doesn't make you go any faster to pull the whole room it is fun to test your tank every now and then to, to pull out an entire room, but then you're you're left with the fact that you just pulled the entire room, and then you're gonna have to deal with that at some point, and some ships can't deal with the entire room in a lot of situations. Um, we are four-shotting this Warlord. For some reason, it got an extra, a little bit of rep in. It got lucky there, survived with a sliver of health. This is a mission that's known to take a good, like, 40 minutes to run. Uh, and it is... Actually, we are more than halfway done with it. Uh, and we're at uh, 18 minutes. I think that the third room's a lot easier than the first two. So as we finish off this last group, we're going to go ahead and start locking up this group. And I generally go from left to right, uh, in, in general. Uh, but there's some missions where you want to go from right to left, or where you want to aggro a certain uh, group. You kind of learn from mistakes as, as you uh, run more and more missions and continue to play EVE Online. Uh, you learn what you should and really shouldn't do running missions just from experience. Um, and and, and the, the big tips I can give you uh, is not do what I'm doing right now. Uh, specifically what I'm doing in this moment is I'm at zero on a beacon. Uh, and that's a really good way to die. So what happens is somebody will scan you down with their probe launcher or with their combat probes. And uh, if you're at zero on the beacon uh, and they come in to gank you, they land right on your head. But if you use a micro warp drive or a micro jump drive and just get away from them, 
uh, or away from zero on the beacon, more often than not, you can align and get out. Bef even if they land on you and you're not paying attention and you're being a bad pilot, more often than not, you can get away as long as you're not at zero on the beacon. So what you would really want to do is you want to micro jump drive off the beacon or use a micro warp drive to get off the beacon. And right now I'm being a really bad example of that. So let's be a good example. Let's get ourselves off the beacon. Uh, the beacon is an object in on every grid of missions. Uh, and the beacon is where you land. Uh, so this beacon is right here. And so when somebody comes into this room, they're gonna land at zero on that beacon or within 2,500 meters of that beacon. Uh, so we don't wanna be uh, anywhere near that uh, in actuality. And so this is another reason why having a fast ship is really, really helpful in mission running because uh, we don't want to be anywhere in close relation to this beacon at all. Uh, let's see. I just had it on overview here. Where is he at? Uh, so now, now we're 35 kilometers off the beacon. Uh, something could potentially point us here. Uh, but if we're going 1,500 meters a second, uh, they're not going to be able to get us. May have just skated outside of the torpedo range uh, here at 41 kilometers. That's okay, we're just going to load a couple of range scripts and see how things progress. Or you know what we can do, it's not really advised, we can just start shooting the group that's closer uh, and we'll kill them before they get uh, before they all get close. We'll let these guys approach that are on the other side and we'll start shooting their friends and get everybody to come towards me because we just skated off the beacon. You just absolutely silly damage. As you can see, I can't really, um, can't really switch over to uh, another target and fire before the, the 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 shot hits. So with the Marquess, it's really hard to miss miss or waste missiles. Uh, I found similar results uh, at comparable cost. So if we do a cheap Typhoon or uh, or a, a cheaper like Raven with torpedoes. They actually do exceptionally well in missions, and the base ranges with, with good support skills are really high. Uh, I think that the base range for the torpedoes with all skills five is somewhere in the ballpark 24 kilometers with rage ammo, which is exceptionally good. So yeah, I think that's what the Typhoon got. We had all precision or, or without the scripts running, and all we had was nothing running for extra tracking, and it did really well. Uh, this fit can be made significantly better uh, by we're using all of these uh, computers in the in the rig spots. What we can easily do is we can put in, if we wanted to, we could put in application rigs, uh, which would increase our application significantly, or we can put in range rigs, which I feel like would be the most useful uh, and get a little bit of extra range out of the ship. Uh, generally, missile uh, velocity is better or more valuable than missile flight time unless your missile flight time is very close to a whole number at that at, at that time so if it's like within 20 percent you might want to get something that helps the missile flight time a little bit uh, but in general uh, you end up getting more actual range when you apply rigs that give you flight time also a rigger rig or the rigger or the qualification rigs uh, will help uh, dps as well uh, and getting the applied number up. Uh, you don't need actual paper DPS with torpedoes. You generally need more application. Uh, but this has definitely changed uh, the optimization of that, what's actually good and what's actually not for application in rigs. Uh, there is going to be a meta shift in battleships and how things work uh, on the large scale. And then also I do want to note that the torpedo launchers as a whole are now easier to fit. They take 7% less power grid and CPU. Uh, so they're a little bit easier to fit than they were before. Uh, the other uh, notes in this uh, patch note was that stealth bombers, uh, the torpedo range bonus got reduced a little bit uh, from 20 to 15% per level. So uh, that goes from 100% to, or no, it'd be from, was that five? That'd be from 100% to 15 per level, which I believe is 75% range uh, to their uh, range with the uh, torpedo with the skills trained to five. End up with a 75% a bonus instead of 100. And then the explosion velocity and explosion radius bonus that the torpedo had from bombers uh, got removed, uh, which is basically them saying, 
you don't get a buff to application because you're a stealth bomber and they already had enough application. Uh, the XL torpedoes got a massive buff as well. Uh, their velocity was increased by 20%. Uh, the explosion velocity was increased by 20%. The missile velocity was also increased by 20%, and they got a, a, a straight up 10% damage increase. And then I believe the Phoenix also got an additional, it went from 965 to 990, and his power grid increased an additional 5,000 points to help accommodate uh, the extra CPU use of the capital launch is a little bit better. Uh, the Moros also got a small change. Uh, it's not a big change, uh, but the low slots, it lost the low, uh, it lost the, lost the mid slot and gained a low slot, which is really beneficial to it. Uh, in this room, we don't have to kill the, uh, the turrets, but the turrets do a lot of damage. What we do have to kill is these guys. Uh, we want to kill these guys first before we start pulling aggro on the turrets. If we just sit here and kill these guys, will take no damage. And then also the Kaldari Navy Griffin, the Griffin Navy issue got changed. So it got reworked in that instead of having ECM module bonus, it has a ECM drone bonus and then has a damage to hybrid turrets, which is interesting. Uh, and then it got additional drone space, which is actually really neat because before it was an ECM ship that was really squishy that's an ECM ship that uses ECM drones, which is going to be really freaking annoying, but it'll probably make it a little bit more interesting in solo um, engagements. Uh, and they kind of completely reworked it. Uh, the notes are the uh, Kalari frigate bonus per skill level is 10% bonus to ECM drone jam duration and 20% bonus to small high retard damage. And then it got a 85% uh, penalty to drone damage and a 50% Penalty to drone hit points and drone control range, so it does still have to get close to targets. Um, and then the drone bandwidth was increased by five uh, from five to twenty-five, and the drone capacity was increased from five to thirty-five. It actually has a lot of room for drones now. Uh, we're gonna go straight for these vipers and get rid of them first, uh, as they are really annoying to our cause. We're gonna go ahead and just load. Uh, micro warp drive towards all these guys uh which is really neat so the 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 all the changes today were i i feel really solid uh they they do uh, they did a lot of justice to torpedoes and torpedoes are definitely going to be a lot of fun to use going forward in the future and i thoroughly have been enjoying torpedoes today, just kind of playing with them in missions. And I'm really looking forward to see how this affects uh, a lot of metas and the way that we behave in battleships. This is particularly good for Typhoons and the ESS and uh, a few other ships are really gonna benefit from this bonus. Uh, these are the Vipers, they're really annoying to hit. So we're gonna go ahead and lock up all these guys. I might go for them first. Might be in a little bit of trouble here. That's okay. We have answers in the form of killing everything that does DPS. Uh, we can't really run away anymore since we've been webbed by all the Vipers and, and Webifiers, and they will tackle us. I'm actually breaking here, which is... Actually, I made a really poor decision. I'm actually going to clear out the DPS, and we might have to overheat the Repper. So I'm going to unlock the Vipers. Overheat the Reppers. And start up on these guys and lock up the DPS here. We'll get the towers up. We got those guys in range. Go ahead and overheat that. I did get myself into a little bit of a predicament here. Uh, we do still have room to recover. I know it's really close, but we will be okay. Uh, I want to get a Hubrack Moon before he gets out of range. For sure. He does the most DPS. I'm actually gonna be really upset if I lose this. Close calls, boys. Close calls. Being a little overconfident here. Get rid of him, and then we'll knock out the sentries right afterwards. You guys think I should include this in the video? <laughs> I'll definitely include this in the video. We definitely got greedy with the uh, with the approach early. With all the frigates here.
Sometimes the missions with no tank, right? We can't overheat for quite a while. Uh, it looks like we're starting to recover our shields a little bit, which is good. This this room again is is generally a very scary room. Um, and we got super greedy on this, like super, super insanely greedy. I'm gonna go ahead and stop overheating now that our shields have popped and we're about to kill the last of the insane DPS. All right, and then we'll go ahead and finish off these frigates, which are slowly slicing us to death. Uh, we are going to stay on range ammo, I suppose. But we removed that DPS very quickly and we were able to overheat and save our ship, which was Quite fun and intense. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Because <laughs> occasionally when I get distracted and talking, I do make mistakes. And this is one of those examples. And I try... I, I'm not going to edit this. Uh, this is a good experience to kind of show you guys that we just didn't just go down and die. We assessed the situation. I knew that I could warp off. But we did stay on grid. Normally these things uh, tackle you. Uh, which is really interesting when that does happen. Uh, but normally these Vipers will disrupt you as well. Uh, so I didn't want to depend on the warp out to survive. And instead of just dying, uh, we overheated our shield booster, which is a large type and not an XL type. Uh, an XL type would have burnt out or would have ran out a lot faster. But at the same time, uh, the large type actually has uh, more duration. So I'm not sure if we, we, we would want to go with an XL in the future. Again, I'm still kind of optimizing this fit a little bit. Uh, this is a fair, fairly cheap variant. Uh, and then a little overheat on the, the guns there. We use a little bit of heat everywhere. Our ship is still okay. Uh, but the cool thing is you can overheat. And overheat can save you very effectively. And as you saw, we have insane application range and we were able to take out Hubrak Moon before he got out of our range and uh he does the most dps in the room and we actually killed him very rapidly uh saving our ship uh, if we didn't have enough dps we would have definitely died there uh, but i just flew this thing right into right into the all the room there right after explaining to you guys that it was dangerous so i kind of deserved that close call but that was fun uh <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll I'll leave this in here and I'll let you guys comment on how bad of a pilot I am. I am a terrible pilot. Um, that was awesome. Anyways, uh, torpedoes great. New change. I I really enjoyed it, and or I, I really have been enjoying it for the past day with the extra range and damage on the torpedoes. The application actually makes them feasible to use. If we had any kind of application assistance on this viper, it would be obliterated. Uh, or if we had Nova ammo, uh, we would have had a lot better time shooting these little frigates. But the fact that we can shoot these things down in a relatively reasonable time is pretty insane uh, when you think about it. Uh, being in, we're using rage torpedoes. Just wrap your head around that. Before this would not have died in less than like five minutes per frigate because we'd be doing like 50 damage a shot or maybe 100 damage shot, but still, we'd be doing very little damage shot, and it would be a really bad experience. Uh, but this is actually semi-dealable, although you should really carry light drones. Uh, I just want to show off that they can apply, and it's actually pretty fantastic. Uh, and the Golem, we were one-shotting these things, and it was actually really silly, uh, because of the target pay bonus and the uh, the explosion radius bonus that the Golem has. Uh, because uh, really, really good at this. And this video took a lot longer than I wanted it to. It's clocking in at about just under 35 minutes, or just over 35 minutes. Uh, I do want to say thank you guys all uh, for flying, and uh, thank you for watching. Uh, it was good having you. Uh, make sure you guys fly fun. Enjoy your time at EVE Online. And uh, we will be seeing you guys in the next one. If you do like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe below. 
Uh, and uh, if you want to see me fly more random ships into random missions, uh, I would be very happy to do so on YouTube. Uh, I have been doing it on Twitch a lot. Uh, so just let me know if you guys want to see something else silly or insane, because this was a rather fun one. Our broadcasts went into low, low armor. We did still have all of our whole HP, which this thing does have a, a bit. Uh, this is the non-elite frigate, uh, so it should be a lot easier to kill than the others were. It has uh, significantly less reps, a little bit less resists. But the fact is that we cleared this with only our weapons, and we did it in about 30 minutes for Vengeance. This mission is notorious for being an incredibly long and incredibly difficult mission, and we even took the time to kill the frigates and explain things. So, um, this was Vengeance in the new... Uh, not really using the Kaidi part of it, but Kaidi Barkest, uh, showing you what it can do in a brawling situation. Uh, it is fully repaired. We're about to be done with the mission. And uh, we will see you guys in the next one. Make sure you guys fly fun and enjoy your time in EVE Online. Oh, you're kidding me. That would have been perfect if I had one more round. <laughs> Oh man. No, he's not. That's gonna take two more shots, right? So there's one. It's gonna make up for our reload time, and then there's two. There we go. Mission complete. We'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Fly fun. Enjoy your time in Evil Nine.